This is part four in our series of lectures on section 3.3. And in this lecture, we're going to give an application of the equivalence class theorem. Namely, we're going to show how to construct the integers from the set of natural numbers. So if we view the natural numbers as being a fundamental object of mathematics that's given to us, how can we use it to construct more complicated objects, such as the set of integers? Now, the set of integers isn't just a set. It has other structure on it. Namely, it has arithmetic structure. One can add and multiply uh, integers together to get other integers. The set of natural numbers also has arithmetic structure. We can add natural numbers together. We can multiply natural numbers together. But subtraction doesn't work all that well on the set of natural numbers. It's possible to give yourself two natural numbers, say 4 and 5, and when you subtract 4 minus 5, you no longer have a natural number. So in constructing the integers from the set of natural numbers, we're going to allow ourselves to use arithmetic operations that, are, that work very well on the natural numbers, but we're not going to allow ourselves to use subtraction at all. Well, the main idea in constructing z from n is to introduce this relation. So this is something that we considered back in section 3.2. Let's define the relation t uh, on the underlying set n cross n to be xy is t related to uv provided x plus v is equal to u plus y. And we showed in that lecture that this is an equivalence relation. For simplicity, let's denote the equivalence class of xy by xy with the bar on top. So an element x prime y prime lies in this equivalence class provided x prime plus y is equal to x plus y prime. And if you just transpose the y prime across and the x prime across, that happens if and only if this happens the differences are equal. And so that means that we should think of this equivalence class as corresponding to the integer x minus y. That's because if we give ourselves anything in this equivalence class and subtract the two entries of it, they all come out the same, because that's the definition of the equivalence class. So now we have a one-to-one -one correspondence between equivalence classes of this relation, and integers. So that means we can identify the set of integers with the set of distinct equivalence classes of this relation. But as I said earlier, the set of integers is more than just merely a set. It also has addition and multiplication on it. And so we need to learn how to add and multiply equivalence classes together in such a way that it corresponds to addition and multiplication on the set of integers. The question is how to do that. Well, I explained the motivation for doing that in an earlier lecture. This is how we want to define addition, and this is how we want to define multiplication. I explained in some detail in, the, in that earlier lecture why um, we defined addition and multiplication in this way. Just to go over it briefly, the idea is that if we look at a particular element of this equivalence class, so for example just xy, and an element of this equivalence class, so let's just say uv, then that corresponds to the integers x minus y and u minus v, and if we just add x minus y to u minus v as integers, you get x plus u minus y plus v, and that corresponds via this one-to-one -one correspondence to this particular equivalence class. Um, similarly, if you want to multiply, so if you multiply uh, x minus y by u minus v, you get x u plus y v minus y u plus x v. And once again, via this one-to-one -one correspondence, that corresponds to this equivalence class. So the only problem that presents itself is, how do we know if we pick a different representative from this equivalence class? Suppose we pick something in that equivalence class other than xy, 
and something in this equivalence class other than uv, and we do a similar calculation, how do we know that this comes out the same? How do we know it's independent of which particular members of the original equivalence classes we pick? So that's our task. We have to prove that it is independent of that, and that's what we're going to do on the next slide. So here's what's involved. We have to give ourselves two elements from the same equivalence class, two elements of this equivalence class here, and two elements of this equivalence class here. And we have to show that if you take the equivalence class x1 plus u1 comma y1 plus v1, and we take the equivalence class x2 plus u2 um, comma y2 plus v2, we have to show that those are the same equivalence class, and that means we have to prove that this pair is t-related to this pair. That's all that remains in order to prove that addition is well-defined. So, in order to show that this is t-related to this, we have to show that x1 plus u1 plus y2 plus v2 is equal to x2 plus u2 plus y1 plus v1, and that's what I've written here. Now what we're given is, we're given that these two come from the same equivalence class, and that means that they're related to each other. And to say that these are related is to say that x1 plus y2 equals x2 plus y1. That's what I wrote here. And we're also assuming that u1 v1 and u2 v2 are related, so that means u1 plus v2 equals u2 plus v1, and that's what I wrote here. Now, if you just simply add this equation to this equation, you get x1 plus y2 plus u1 plus v2 equals x2 plus y1 plus u2 plus v1, and that's exactly what we wanted to prove. And so that completes the proof that this kind of addition is well-defined. It's independent of which particular uh, members of these equivalence classes we select. Now we have to do a similar kind of calculation for multiplication. Um, it turns out to be a bit more complicated. Let's have a look at that. So once again, we give ourselves two different elements from the same equivalence class, xy, and we give ourselves two different elements from the same equivalence class, uv, and we have to prove that if you multiply them in this way, that the element corresponding to x1, y1, u1, v1 that looks like this, in other words, this element here, and the element in which we represent it with respect to x2, y2, and u2, v2, so this element, we have to show that those two are related. So in other words, we have to prove that this number plus this number is equal to this number plus this number, and that's what I've written here. And what we have to go on is that we have our assumption that this is related to this, and this is related to this. And to say that this is related, uh, excuse me, to say that this one is related to this one is to say that u1 plus v2 is equal to u2 plus v1. That's what I wrote here. And to say that these are related is to say x1 plus y2 equals x2 plus y1. That's what I wrote there. Okay, so given this and this, we have to prove this. And that's more difficult than the, uh, the previous exercise with addition. But if you do it in the right way, it's not so terribly difficult. So take, so here's, here's the prescription. Uh, look at this particular equation here, and we're going to multiply both sides by u1. Um, so, u1 x1 plus u1 y2, that's what I wrote here, equals u1 x2 plus u1 y1, that's what I wrote here. So we get that equation, and next I'm going to multiply both sides of this by v1, but I'm going to write it in the opposite order. I'm going to put v1 x2, which is here, v1 x2 plus v1 y1, that's here, equals v1 x1 plus v1 y2. That's what I wrote here. Okay, so we collect those two equations. Now this time look at the 
second, second equation, and we're going to multiply both sides by y2. But once again, I'm going to start on the right side. u2y2 plus v1y2, that's what I wrote here, equals u1y2 plus v2y2, that's what I wrote here. And finally, we're going to take this equation and multiply both sides by x2. x2u1 plus x2v2 equals x2u2 plus x2v1, that's what I wrote here. Now, add together all four equations, add these guys together, and equate that to the sum of these four guys. If you do that, you're going to get eight terms on both sides. And I claim that four terms will cancel. Y2U1 on the left cancels with this, uh, let's see, Y2U1 on the right here. X2V1 on the left cancels with X2V1 there. Y2V1 on the left cancels with Y2V1 there. And X2U1 cancels with that one. Okay, so four of the terms cancel, and I claim that all of these terms appear on the left side of this. Okay, so look here. x1, u1 appears here. y1, v1 appears here. y2, u2 appears here. And x2, v2 appears here. And on the other side, x2, u2 appears here. y2, v2 is here. y1, u1 is here and x1, v1 is here. So you see, we obtain this equation um, by just simply adding both of these together and equating them, and, and we get the result. Okay, so that proves that multiplication is well-defined, and that completes the proof. So just to, to recap what we've done, this is our equivalence relation on n cross n, we say xy is equivalent or is t related to uv provided x plus v equals u plus y. Then we've used the equivalence classes of this equivalence relation to do the following. We constructed a set, namely the set of equivalence classes of this relation, which is a one-to-one -one correspondence with all the integers. We've defined addition and multiplication on the set of equivalence classes in a way that corresponds to I guess I forgot to write addition, but that corresponds to addition and multiplication of integers. And one other property of the integers that I haven't yet mentioned, you'll notice that the integers contains the natural numbers. Uh, the natural numbers sit inside of the integers. So you'd sort of expect um, this collection that's into one-to-one -one correspondence with the uh, integers um, should also have a subset that corresponds to the set of natural numbers. And here it is. It's the set of equivalence classes of this form where the second component is zero. So as a result of our equivalence classes satisfying all of these properties, we can say that we've constructed the set of integers from the set of natural numbers.